Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. You know, since the release of Logic Pro 10.8 just a couple of weeks ago in the App Store, I have received one question more than any other to my inbox. It all has to do with the brand new Mastering Assistant plugin that comes with 10.8. Just as a reminder, Mastering Assistant is a brand new plugin that will master your track for you. It will analyze your mix, your project from beginning to end or just a section of your project and then offer suggestions for adjusting the tonality, the dynamics and imaging of your project so it is ready for release. And I think Mastering Assistant is monumental for Logic users. I love this new feature. But for some of us who have updated to 10.8, you may find out that you don't have access to everything in Mastering Assistant, specifically under that character section. Because there are four characters to choose from. There's clean, transparent, punch, and valve. But you might only see the option for clean on your system. Now, there's a reason for this, especially in this world that we live in now with Apple Silicon. For some of us, there's going to be a solution. For others, there's not going to be a solution aside from upgrading your Mac. I know that sounds terrible for some of us. I don't mean to offer bad news. But for those of us on Apple Silicon Macs, like the M1, M2, and M3, I want to show you how to fix this. Let's dig into it. All right, so we're taking a look at a project that I recently mixed. And if we go into the mixer, I'm just going to press X on my Mac's keyboard to open the mixer. And we go all the way to the end of our project here on the stereo output. We can see I've loaded the Mastering Assistant plugin. And we can see the changes that Mastering Assistant has provided to this mix in particular. I adjusted the loudness because I felt it could be louder overall. This sounded great for my project. Now you can, you know, let's, we can remove the Mastering Assistant plugin. In fact, I'll copy these settings. So when I remove it, okay, we can see that option to load the Mastering Assistant. I can just click. It's gonna go through an entire analysis process across the project and will load the Mastering Assistant plugin last in the plugin chain on the stereo output. Now, just because Logic loads the Mastering Assistant plugin last in the plugin chain on your stereo output, it doesn't mean you have to keep it as the final plugin on your channel strip. You can move the Mastering Assistant plugin to be before any of your metering, any of particular processing, if you so choose. The only thing you can't do is drag the Mastering Assistant plugin to another channel strip aside from the stereo output. All right, so I'm gonna load the Mastering Assistant plugin and I'm just gonna paste my changes. Awesome, it was very consistent. That's something I really love about Mastering Assistant is that it's consistent in its analysis and the results that it provides. All right, from here, I wanna focus in on the character tab in the upper left-hand corner of the Mastering Assistant plugin. We can see that Mastering Assistant has selected the clean character for my mix. And if you click on the tab, you should see three other options of character that you can choose between that will impart different types of characters for the mix. And some are recommended to be better than others for different styles of music. But take note, the three other characters, Valve, Punch, and Transparent, all say that they require Apple Silicon to be able to use. Now, it should be no secret to anyone that the latest version of Logic Pro will always require the two most recent Mac operating systems. That includes macOS Ventura, as well as macOS Sonoma. But with the transition from Intel to Apple Silicon, there's now further hurdles to specific elements and aspects of a project. If you're running an Intel-based Mac, so a Mac that you didn't purchase in the last probably couple of years that are running specifically on Apple Silicon, if you're on an Intel-based Mac, the only character option available for you is the clean option. Unfortunately, you would have to upgrade your Mac. Of course, not an ideal solution, but unfortunately, that's just where we're at in this trajectory of Logic Pro and Macs. Now, you might be someone who did upgrade to an Apple Silicon Mac, and you may be seeing exactly what I'm seeing on screen and just wondering, what the heck is going on here? I have the hardware. Why don't I see these three other options to use? The reason for this, my friend, is most likely you're running Logic Pro using the Rosetta translation system that is provided by Apple temporarily as we go through this transition from Intel to Apple Silicon. So let's close down Logic Pro right now and find Logic Pro in the Applications folder. So I'm gonna to go to the Finder here on my Mac. You can, of course, always go right up to the top taskbar and just load a new Finder window. And right in the Applications folder, you wanna go find Logic Pro. 
From here, let's click on Logic Pro, but let's not open the application. So a single click will do. Now, if you right click or hold control and click, a menu pops up, which offers the option to get info. Or you can just press Command and I on your Mac's keyboard to close or open the info pane. Right here, you can see I've enabled Rosetta on my system so that I could open Intel-based plugins in Logic Pro without any problems. So the solution is simply to disable this option. All right, I'll use Command and I to close the Get Info pane. And let's now pop Logic open. Let's open the mixer once again by pressing X, go to the end of the project, open the Mastering Assistant plugin, and booyah. We now see the transparent character, which I prefer over the three other models, at least at this point in time. And if we click, oh, look at that. We have all four options to choose from. Beautiful. Now, one side effect of disabling Rosetta is that if you use any sort of Aura 2.0 plugins, such as Melodyne, Vocaline, Repitch, RX, you'll no longer get to take advantage of the Aura-based benefits of these tools. So what do I mean by this? Well, for this vocal loop that I dragged into Logic Pro, let's go ahead and go to the audio effects. Let's go down to audio units, Celemony, and let's load the supposed Aura version of Melodyne. All right, so Melodyne's been loaded. It claims to be the Aura or Audio Random Access version of Melodyne. Let's go ahead and open it. Now, if you look at the plugin, I shouldn't actually see this transfer button at all. Instead, I should be able to just hit play and the audio will be automatically transferred from here in the tracks area into the plugin. But unfortunately, that's not the case. I have to enable the transfer button and then hit play and wait for the audio to play through for it to transfer into Melodyne so I can make my edits. We will be just fine. So there's our audio. I can start to make edits as I see fit. Obviously not such a big deal when you have a vocal pass that's only a bar in length, but if you have an entire song worth of vocals, it is definitely not ideal to have to play the entire song from beginning to end to transfer the audio into the plugin. Now, there is actually a reason for this behavior that Aura is not working for Melodyne or any other Aura-based plugin. To figure this out, let's open the activity monitor on my system. Now let's type into the search bar in the activity monitor, AU hosting. Now, here's the deal. On an Apple Silicon Mac, not running in Rosetta, Logic runs third-party plugins such as Melodyne, as well as any other third-party plugin outside of Logic Pro. These plugins, though, are appearing in Logic Pro. They're no longer being run inside the DAW. Instead, these plugins are being hosted outside of Logic Pro in the AU hosting service. So if a plugin crashes, in this case, if Melodyne crashed, it would not crash Logic as a whole. This is why Logic now offers the option to recover the project or the plugin when a crash occurs. So that's pretty cool, right? A plugin crashes and you can recover that plugin without ever having to leave Logic Pro. The unfortunate side effect of this is that Aura 2.0 plugins no longer have direct access to the audio in the Logic Pro project because they're not being hosted in the project. So as a temporary solution until I assume Apple figures something out for how to make Aura 2.0 plugins work in this particular arrangement is that we once again have to quit Logic Pro, navigate to the Applications folder, select Logic Pro, hold Command, press I, enable the option to open using Rosetta, and let's pop open Logic Pro once again. All right, we're back. We're running Rosetta. Let's load Melodyne using the Aura version. Pop it open. And look at that. No transfer button. If I hit play, the audio is instantly transferred. I don't even have to listen to the audio. It just has been transferred. Can start making edits as I see fit. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, please subscribe to Why Logic Pro Rules. I've got templates down below that you can download for free that you can use for mixing your projects. The mastering one maybe will not be relevant soon because we have Mastering Assistant. I plan on making some upgrades and updates. So you may want to subscribe, download those templates right now so you can be privy to those updates to the template in the very near future. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Take care.